trust me, Ibuka, I am with the government on this, that if we take our shekel, it will be a huge, huge victory. It will also send a message to the Spencer group again, that if we could take out the big one, then we can take out the smaller ones. I am not being pessimistic. I am seriously hoping. But I've seen so many things in Nigeria to teach me not to hold my breath whenever I get a promise from any government agency. I would rather pray for you that it succeeds and celebrate when it happens. So I don't get to get disappointed when it does not happen. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you did say at the beginning that um, you'd like to give credit to the government for, you know, the victories they've achieved and all of that. Do you think that's sort of distracted from what we're hearing now in the South, especially the Southeast with all of the drama with Biafra and all of that? Um, if, is there, you, do you see a situation where maybe this is finally put to rest and then something else, another battle begins? We will keep having these ethnic battles until we have that discussion around Nigeria. There is, that discussion will keep avoiding. Should we stay together? Should we split? Should we have federalism? Should we restructure? That conversation needs to happen. Now, it needs to be addressed. We need to fix the facts. We, need, we should stop postponing the doomsday and then come face to face with our demons and deal with it. If Nambikano is put down today, somewhere else will spring up probably in the south south, in the west, probably will give the presidency to the southeast and then the guys in the southwest start agitating, we keep having these discussions until somehow we sit down, ask the general of us, what do we want from this entity called Nigeria? And let's decide it. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not a taboo. <laughs> well, restructuring is, is, a, is a trending word now in, in Nigeria, so um, it looks like we might be talking about that for a while. I don't know if it's going to happen at some point, but I mean, it's obviously a conversation being held now. Hopefully, it does lead to some results. But let's move on now to uh, some not so great news. I think it was two weeks ago we did hear about flooding in parts of Lagos Island and Suleja. Those two par parts in particular were particularly strongly strong heats. Suleja was very badly hit as well, as, as well as Lagos Island. But woke up again yesterday and today to see pictures from parts of the mainland of Lagos, especially Suruleri and Port Harcourt, and I think Asaba as well, uh, which are other parts of Nigeria, which have also been flooded, basically. And uh, I mean, it's where you, where you, flooding is a natural disaster. I mean, there are parts of China, I think, I also saw in the news this morning, in northern China that, are, that witnessed uh, massive flooding. So when there's a lot of rain, it doesn't matter how sophisticated your, your, your drains are, you will get flooded. But we know how peculiar our cases are, especially with some of the pictures we saw in Surulere during the week. There was a particular street with a picture that was all over social media with all of the trash possible floating, which was a clear indication of the fact that the drains were blocked and the trash had nowhere else to go and were now on the street. So how do we start fixing these things? I mean, a lot of them are long-term, but why, why are we still having this conversation about blocked drains in 2017? I two weeks ago when the um, island flood happened, I, I sent out a tweet. I, there was this conversation about how government has failed and the rest of them, and I asked the question, if the government decides to fix the drain, the, the, the flooding, are we ready to pay the price? Now, let us look at these things very, very realistically. The government has failed because you've allowed people who, people build structures where they shouldn't have built structures. We, the citizens, have failed because we have induced government officials to give us approval to build structures where we shouldn't build structures. And we're all paying for it now. And make it worse, these little surviving drains, we started to turn them to Loma dumping sites. And we fill them up. Now we're paying the price. Interestingly, probably the government officials who give us this license are not affected by the floods. Now, when we are ready to have that discussion, the, the truth about it is there will be huge losses, monumental losses. People will become homeless. People will lose millions. Some people will die from the heartbreak. My fear is this. Are we as citizens ready to pay that price? Is there any sitting governor who has the political will to commit that political suicide? Because your attempt to do that is guaranteed. You're not coming back. Your party's not coming back. But in the long term, we will all be better for it. It is not just in Lagos State. It is everywhere. Are we ready to pay that price that the Abuja citizens paid under Nasser Erufai? But it's, it's, not, it's not about time we started, we started, we started I mean, going down that route. I mean, it doesn't have to happen in one fell swoop. But the fact that everybody knows that these are the problems, 
shouldn't we start talking about it and actually start acting towards that? Yeah, because he's wanting to know you are sick. It's another thing to go to the hospital. So there are so many persons who are sick who don't go to the hospital because they're scared of having a surgery. So until you convince yourself that you're ready to go through the surgical process, you would keep managing your sickness. So we all know we are. We have a problem. We all have an idea what the solution is. The question is, are we ready to pay the price? Now, until we answer that question, we'll keep managing the flood. Well, I hope uh, uh, condolences to everybody who lost property, who is going through... I mean, the pictures that we can see on the screen now are quite devastating, and uh, it's across Nigeria, so it's, it's not just a, a Lagos issue. Yeah. It's, everybody seems to have a story, and it's not a very uh, pleasant one to tell, so hopefully people... I don't know. Government just needs to work, work better. I don't think it's it's about the pure waters we throw we throw we throw in the no, trash. No. Yeah, that might contribute, but it's way it's beyond way that. Beyond it's way beyond that. that. Finally, let's talk about local government elections, which were held in Lagos yesterday. And um, <laughs> I was saying before before the we came on air that I didn't know anyone who voted yesterday, and you said you voted. And I say that because I mean I I sort of monitored my area, and I, it rained a lot yesterday in Lagos. And people just took it as a holiday, pretty much. And I saw the news today with the turnout was beyond abysmal. I don't know that you would even call it a 10% turnout. What are your thoughts on apathy with elections besides presidential elections? It's become a thing, isn't it? <laughs> Very quickly. And that, that, is, that is the major reason why we are where we are right now. Um, we are all interested in voting the president and the governors. But we, we seem to forget that uh, maybe, because, maybe because the local government seems to be an appendage of the state governors. Maybe if we give local government autonomy, will, it will bring great life into that arm and of people. People see local governments actually work. Of course, because they are. Uh, They're basically powerless now. They are more like essays to the governors. Yeah. So <laughs> well, maybe if we bring life to that arm of government, but people need to take local government elections very seriously. They are the ones that are very, very, very close to us. And until we take them seriously, we can't really, really get to Buhari. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Imano, for that very good way to wrap it up. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. We'll take a quick break now and be right back. Please stay with us. Just